Welcome back, Proxy Table Gaming fans. You're joined by the Gobbo for the Goblin's Grotto Hobby Show. We have scat that. Do we? Apparently. Hmm. News to me. And we definitely have a Marmaduke. Hello, Internet. How are you? We're very well. You? I, I'm good. It's weird. When I say internet, I don't always necessarily mean your good selves because I tend to mean <laughs> our, our viewers. So I actually get thrown when when the internet <laughs> asks back live, <laughs> which, is, which is amazing. Uh, but then I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting this as an answer. Uh, how how do I follow this? <laughs> no, uh, but I am very well. No, and it's wonderful to be back. Thank you ever so much. Uh, yeah. How, how are you doing? Yeah, we're doing really well. Really well. Going to get some wonderful things for you guys to learn today. Looking forward to it. So, rally around the flag. Leaders are not born. They are forged in the heat of battle. Unless they're scat back. So, rally around the flag. Coming up in today. Which... Go on. In which case, they are born. On the bottom of a temple guard's foot. <laughs> so, we've got the T9A forum. So, we've got St. Barbara. And we've got Mad Hat, so they've got some wonderful things from the forum. Brilliant. We've got a brief discussion about why do we hobby? Why do we do mm. it to ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> and then some external inspirations. So I've got two artists, Sketch Goblin and Adrian Smith from pre-long time ago, Games Workshop fame, um, who is an outstanding artist in his own right. First up, then, it's St. Barbara. Look at these warriors. Brilliant. Just fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Love them. Such a clever idea. The black, the white, and then the red just pops so lovely. It's just a, a classic colour combo, isn't it? Really smart. The fact that he's got three warrior chariots as well. Shrines. It's the it's um, well, Ooh. funny enough, well, weirdly enough, I was about to say before before that picture came up is that it's kind of like a magic eye, but not a magic eye, because when you look at the the checkers, uh, uh, bases. Pattern, bases and patterns yeah. uh, can do funny sort of things with some people's eyes, yeah, and yeah. Uh, especially when. Yeah, uh, it, for, for all sorts of different reasons. And they can really play with um, perspective, even when they're absolutely dead straight. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to optical illusions, they can absolutely mess with your mess exactly. with your perspective. And uh, and this is this works so well with something like a, a chaotic faction, mm. you know, even if it was to be like demons or something like that. Um, and yeah, and funny enough, you then sort of uh, then the next picture is uh, is that with the eye. Um, yeah, really... brilliant! What a what a great great theme and army. It's a, it's a cheeky way of baiting your opponent into a long charge that they can't make, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Imagine imagine mm. having facing this when you couldn't measure distances and you had to guess and you only had one eye. Oh wow! Yeah. Triggering. So he's used the cocktail sticks there to get that eye out. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, oh, there's so many checkers. That would have done my nut in painting that. Are they painted or stuck down? I Look at the flag. Painted. On the flat. Oh god, yeah. I'm still looking at the bases. <laughs> I've been mesmerised by the optic illusion. I, I think it's brilliant. It works so well. It's very and good. Golden oldies. Yeah, yeah, they're great. They're very cool. I miss that night champion on the mm. worm. The thing. Yeah, well, if you jump on, you've got about another two days. And is that the one that's on the made to order? Um, is that right? It was, right yeah. Thing? On the made to order, GW's got a made to order. Who loves a gargoyle? This guy, this guy loves a gargoyle. That's the. That's the oh, that's the hero quest mm. blood thirster gargoyle. Is it a gargoyle? Then? It's called a gargoyle. Yeah, is it a gargoyle? That's amazing. It's awesome, isn't it? So that's his herald. Really good. 
That cool. is, oh man, I want to mess with your mind. It's so good. Yeah, great. That's a, love it. That's actually, I'm really glad that he's that this has happened with the basing scheme. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just broken through the tiles, isn't he? Yeah, very clever. Really smart. All checkered characters. Wow, classic, some real classic ones there as well. Yeah, oh, really yes. Is. Look at the chosen on them. Crazy. Brilliant. So many spikes. They must be uh, they must be all metal as well. Every single yeah. one. Yeah. Those ones are metal. Well, say, all, all lead, yeah. Wow. It's great. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing work. He had to remortgage his house to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> Look at them. Ah, oh, lovely. I love the big googly eye and the ones on the left hand side at the back. Mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I wonder what those models look great. Mi- like Miss, maybe? Are they miss? Are not they? Miss, no. no, not miss. All right. no, I'm not sure what they are, but they're, they're... they're good. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. They're Let us know, St. Yeah. Barbara. Let us know. Look at him. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's lovely. Okay, that's going to be his Doom Lord. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, be, yeah, yeah. it's like Jason's lesser known younger brother, Todd. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> out of all the names <laughs> you just picked out of the name, Todd. Yeah, really smart. Oh, uh, yes. Look at that. That's great. That's very cool. Wow. Very really cool. smart. And again, he's done the thing with the basing again. I need to throw your perspective off. Perspective mm. off. Chimera Manticore. Chimera. Just the goat eye. Ugh, I hate goat eyes. Right. Is that a um, yeah. Scorn model, Dan? Possibly. I mean, it's a good model. Yeah. It's a great model. Really nice. That's the size comparison for the three. Oh, love Do you remember oh. when that Games Workshop model on the right first came out and it was just like, oh my god, yeah. how could models get any bigger than this? Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic, St. Barbara. Excellent. Yeah, amazing work. Then our good old friend Mad Hat, his vermin swarm. Here we go. Oh, and they're actually. <laughs> they're actually Romans. Afrazi. <laughs> Hey, really, really nice. I love them. Nice, that's really cool. It takes a very special person to wake up one morning and go, Do you know what these 300 models need? A red and yellow checker pattern. Yep, that's... <laughs> yep. yeah, I, I just think it's lovely. Some it really fits with the theme, doesn't it? It's, I mean, I know that the, the whole ninth age vibe is that. The uh, the Vermin Swarm are very heavily Roman influenced, but actually, like seeing them, mm. kind of makes you go, "Oh, that's that feels more intimidating yeah. than like GW's version of rat people." Exactly. Mm. I think they're brilliant. So good, but he's done all the individual painting on each of the shield. Yeah, that's very. That is. Some it's dedication. dedication, very, very mm. impressive. Yeah. One of the things I have also noticed: there's no unit fillers. No. Oh yeah, look at that! Wow. So I would have got twenty five percent of those bad boys out there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely, yeah. But no, fair play to Mad at they're, they're beautiful, and then each unit is slightly different. Yeah, excellent work. Yeah, that's fantastic. Gunners, gunner teams. Nice. That's cool. So smart, so smart. <laughs> it's the it's uh, it's the fact that there's at least two levels of highlight. Yes, mm. on all models. Yeah. Oh, it, it, wow. it is a a chore, but he he has smashed it absolutely. Smashed yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, they're cool. Yeah, like the Giselles. Yeah, great. Just amazing. Lovely. Fantastic amazing work. work. Yeah, there's some very really well real dedication to that. That's brilliant. Well done. Yeah, so Sim Barbara and Mad Hat guys on the forum, um, give them some love. Um, go and have a look at their stuff on there as well. I've only done a, a portion of, of what they've got on there. 
And they're very active on the forums as well. They're very wonderful mm. humans uh, with a lot of advice, a lot of experience, uh, and they say very nice things. Uh, they're very wonderful people. Exactly. Next up, why do we hobby, guys? Why do we do it? <laughs> so for me, it's a creative outlet, entirely a creative outlet. Um, my mind is always full of what's my next army going to be? Mm. <laughs> How am I going to make them into goblins? <laughs> and just trying to then get that into the thing. And then, for example, like when we went to Cardiff, uh, people coming up to me and, for want of a better word, gushing over the army, it makes it all so worth it. Yeah. And then Marmaduke, sense of accomplishment. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's... um. The, the idea of sort of completing that character or completing that unit. Um, but but there was, I mean, this could be a bit of a double-edged sword, this one, because like in in any art uh, and, and creative outlet, um, <laughs> there, is, there is sometimes, some, for some people, all the time, that you've never, something's never finished, that there's always that yeah. extra highlight or that mm -hmm. extra bit, I need to change that basing. I'm not happy with that base. Or I need to add to that army, or I want to get that model. And that's and that can also that's also a positive thing as well. Yeah. But I think I think when you sorry, when I when I have um worked many hours on from the 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 first thought has come into my head of that's what I want to create through to then seeing it completed or at least to where i've gone i am really happy with this i think this looks great or it's achieving the joy it's giving me the joy that i want it to exactly. um that's where the the sort of like that sense of accomplishment uh happens and then well i mean like when we when we do our little army parades either for ourselves or for each other for for like the forums or for a family photo or anything like that you know that in, in itself is there's something about seeing all our models all sort of like yeah. ranked up and in ready to go to a tournament or or, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be yeah. and that you know for me that's that's sort of like a big accomplishment to see that's my army that's four four and a half thousand points worth um <laughs> yes yeah, so that's that's what yeah. i mean by, by that bit yeah you know about accomplishment like having it 3d printed as well <laughs> So yeah. what Dan's mentioned in previous episodes as well, we've 3D printed it, assembled it, painted it, and it is it is a massive accomplishment. So yeah, no, it makes perfect sense to me. Oh, I was going to say well, so I was going to say a point about creative outlet actually, because as a as like for my job as a as a creative anyway, it doesn't even seem as a hobby because I'm always wanting to thinking about it and always doing it when i can and i'm mm, lucky yeah. to be very supported by my wife and my friends about doing this and so it's more than just a hobby it's also sort of part of part of what i do and and who i am oh, who are, yeah. um yeah and it's and so it's like <laughs> it's gonna sound so bad but it's gonna be like it's not just a hobby, it's a way of life. Um, <laughs> which is, is going to sound so horrendous to say it like that. You're going to get a sign just, in your kitchen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm going to get that in letters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> put it on the windowsill. Or do it, I'm going to do it in crochet and put it in crochet. Exactly. But I, look, I, I just like, I think that like, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that I understand when you say about you're always thinking about it and when other people yeah. are always thinking about it. And if you go to sleep dreaming about it and thinking about it, if it brings you joy, absolutely. And that's yep. that's totally cool. Storytelling. Your storytelling. Um, yeah, I mean I I think I do it because I have to. Uh <laughs> like so um I recently found out that I've got ADHD. Um which makes a lot of sense because like from a young age i've always been told oh you've got such an imagination on you and like it never like that inability to kind of sit still and 
like not always ask and then what if if that makes sense yeah um mm. so that that constant strive that that journey for uh for something new something exciting um just kind of lends itself to this hobby in a very very creative way um it does mean that i am like the perfect kind of customer for someone like games workshop um because i will get approximately 60 percent through a project before yeah. um <laughs> yeah. flopping into the next one yeah um but yeah i mean ryan you're absolutely right in terms of things of like for example 3d printing now that i'm able to take that next level to not only um like paint collecting and painting my vision i can now literally create it yeah um that's been that's been incredible uh and i think like truthfully i don't i honestly don't know where or what i'd be doing if i didn't have such a creative output because I've, I've been doing this for like well since i was like 13 so yeah yeah over 20 years kind of thing and like I'm, I'm glad that i now know why my brain works the way it does yes um but i'm very very thankful that i've just had this output possibility definitely and i i think like the the, the storytelling aspect of being able to tell your own stories in yeah. your own way and even if it's just telling them to yourself is yeah just as valid and just as important than if you are telling those stories to other people or if you are part of the overarching story that, that's being told you know the immersive aspect of well these are two things that two armies that have met on a battlefield and this is the re the narrative that's being played out um i think it's all encompassing and all, all all important and whether it's happening on the micro internally with yourself or whether you are part of the bigger picture um all of it is equally valid and uh important for me i don't speak on behalf of other people but i i i enjoy all aspects of those you know those parts of the storytelling process exactly tommy t came up with meeting new people going down to gaming clubs and stuff like that you you tend to see the same crew, yeah. if that makes sense. But going to tournaments, going and actually meeting people, like I wouldn't have met any of you guys if I hadn't have gone and taken that next step to actually go and meet people. Yeah. yeah. And to be fair for Tommy, he was running out of new faces going dogging. So <laughs> oh, there we are, demonetized again. <laughs> I uh, so I I'm I mean I met um, I met Rory who was on our previous shows and Rory was doing doing this hobby playing Ninth Age and Rory was best man at my wedding. Oh, oh yeah. I never knew that. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, well, I haven't actually ever told you that, have I? Um, and yeah, and it's like meeting. I mean, to be fair, I haven't really even known your good selves for like pro not even properly for a year yet i mean we've known of each other and things but yeah. mm. and it's and i yeah it's that's such a tommy's like come up with a really good point about meeting new people because i think that shared interest i have yeah. this in my music community as well when it's such a strong shared interest those Definitely. friendships and those relationships um are, are usually forged quite quickly and are, are very strong quite in a, in a in a quicker way than if you just meet people in another social setting of like a, a pub or or at exactly. work or anything like that yeah and that's that's something that's really important i think about this hobby Definitely. i suppose within months realistically of uh ryan and i first meeting we'd pledge to <clears throat> make brand new Warriors of the Dark God armies for the next Art of War. Exactly. Oh, yes. That's amazing. That's yeah. cool. That was by April that year. Wow. wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Like six weeks later. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Lucky sixes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that figures. Pretend I'm clever. That's, that tracks. <laughs> um, I think he's, he's very modest when he says that. <laughs> uh, humble, maybe. But I think Lucky Sixes is actually a, a good gamer and he does it a lot more for the gaming side of it 
and mm. he enjoys getting close to podium and building on his list experiences every tournament. Mm. It's not really my cup of tea, but he, <laughs> the way he worded it to pretend I'm clever is like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hyper G, fuel my imaginative mind. Yeah. Nice. So again, very similar Lovely. to all of us. Very similar to what we've said already. <laughs> and then finally, we've got Phil, so Sensei Gusto. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So he does his hobby to assert tactical. <laughs> I, I think... get plus one to my charge rolls if it's fully painted. Exactly. <laughs> I think like the I think you know that can link into the the sort of pretending I'm clever really because in the yes. sense that in the sense that challenging oneself by in a in a more sort of you know trying to test yourself so we test ourselves in a hobby way you know we test ourselves about whether it's like painting Craig's going mm -hmm. to do his he's going to test himself with his um, KOE army by yeah. trying to paint to the best, perhaps paint to the best standard he's ever painted to. Exactly. Um, I'm going to try and do the, the, the grim dark I've always ever wanted to achieve, right? So mm -hmm. that's how we, I, I, it's like, and now for like asserting tactical dominance is, is also something that you can do by testing yourself. Exactly. Ha, ha, can I actually achieve the, the, the thing that I'm trying to like better, be better at? And I think it's a valid, I mean, whether it's said in jest or not, I think it's actually a very valid, valid point. And I think it's so like, yeah. It makes cool. sense with Phil because Phil in his spare time um, is a jiu-jitsu um, coach. Wow. So he does cool. a lot of um, that. He also coaches. So he, he takes people to fights. Nice. Um, so actually proper like MMA fights and things like that. And he coaches them through it and stuff like that. So he, that is his mentality. So when he then tries to apply that to T9A, it's it's not something that I really understand because I just don't have that killer instinct, if that makes sense. I mean, not very many people at a tournament will try and suplex you through the table. No. No. Blessing. I think yeah, I think that's uh, I bet I think it's uh, yeah, I think that's that's sort of like testing your own Exactly. Uh, men, sort of like your own having that own mental arithmetic and your your own sort of mental athletics is uh, is a very valid uh, way you know way to have your own hobby and I I or part of the hob your own hobbying um, and challenge yourself that way. I think it's good. I think exactly. it's a cool way. I think it's a a more disciplined version of what Lucky Six has said. So yeah. Whereas mm. Phil was more martial arts orientated he's a lot more calm and disciplined in how he goes about things lucky six is although he's going to the same trying to do the same thing he's a bit more jokey about it if that makes sense yeah so yeah that's just a, a brief little discussion about those there okie dokie so first up on the next one we have a sketch goblin so this is an artist that is on instagram talking about going on damn rabbit holes um, and the style of his art, I think it's really fascinating. Fantasy characters for Dungeons and Dragons. So on commission, so he does take commissions for, for character building, but he does it all in this style. With inspirations from your own descriptions, he helps bring the characters to life in a unique and fun way. Ooh. Oh, love it. So Ooh. clever. Really, That's really great. clever. Okay. Very cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like the fact that they're all geometric shapes. So again, because of the style of his art, mm. it's yeah. not sketched like you'd see like with a pencil first and then painted. It all seems to be digital, which is really smart. I'm really intrigued to find out the stories behind the... I've just noticed, sorry, that Kenku's called Dinner Time. Yes. Yeah. I'm really intrigued to find out the stories behind these characters. Yes, exactly. But each of the characters has such a personality. I like mm. the fact that um, the little kobold there has a massive needle and scissors as his weapons. Just mm. really, really cool. Goblin Barbarian. <laughs> and again, 
<laughs> he isn't wearing any pants, is he? <laughs> no. Probably not. Um, but these are all commissioned. So again, these are what people have used in their Dungeons and Dragons or in their playing games, and they've approached him to create these characters based from their descriptions. Yeah. I think Excellent. it's very clever that you can then just do that. And looking at the dates, there's a good turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm. I love them. They're great. I said Goblin Road called Battenberg. It's brilliant. <laughs> that is great. One for you, Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. Hey, okay. I love yeah, these. Yeah. Really, really clever. Very good. So, Sketch Goblin, guys, check him out on Instagram and on his website. Well, yeah. Um, inspiration that can we can potentially put into our art yeah and now we've got a big gun guys this is adrian Smith, um and probably one of the first sort of artists for me growing up that mm. really influenced my art style um and especially my love of warhammer art yeah. so youtube and instagram guys just yeah just amazing for a, a uh drawn so item just so good. wow so good <laughs> again pencil so imagine when we said a second ago about that um saint barbara and the black and white army mm. yeah how to do that on a flat canvas rather than on physical models as well so clever Oh, that's even more impressive. Holy yeah. moly. Oh, my God. Just beautiful. And again, it's fantastical, but also at the same time, slightly odd. So it's mm. got that. Remember, we, we had Ed Binkley and showed his goblins on there, the portraits that he mm. did. Yes. This where yeah. the proportions were slightly off. And like Dan says quite often, it's oh, you, yeah, you there's... question it. Yeah, because of the the heads are slightly bigger. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the faces really the faces are slightly bigger than everything else. Yeah. Well, the little goblin child on the left, there, the eyes and the eye sockets are tiny in comparison to the size of the head and nose. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but just yeah, I think also what's what's really interesting about these as well is that there's a um, the gob we know that they're goblins, but yes. so that's quite clear. However, though, there's a a very human aspect to them, as exactly. though they're they're gnomes or they're dwarfs or halflings or something like that. They um, have but a, but a very what, human feel to them, don't they? Yeah, but what he's done is that he's created goblins that that are you know look they are they have relationships. They have they have. Uh, a, a brotherhood or camaraderie or, or something and they're not like you know just trying to steal babies for yeah. for their kings yeah. or whatever they exist to be more than villains yeah thank you yes yes absolutely then getting into that's, the traditional that's walk. an orc that is an orc that's an orc right there orc and arc, isn't he? I know I mean it's not like World of Warcraft movie took yeah, Let me drink. this is starting to go into your more Warhammer fantasy style. style walk. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I mean, the, the sort of like range. OG. Yeah. So I think a lot of these were concept art for Warhammer Online. Ah, I was going to say, I was getting real it. vibes of loved Age it. of Reckoning. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I loved that. I was big, played that a lot. Just the sense of movement in all those drawings. Like, there's just something. There's just something so iconic about this silhouette of creature. Yeah. Um, which I think is why I was so confused that G Dubs decided to move away from it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's like I think we've got to, you know, it's a conversation around how close it was to to what may or may not have been Tolkien's vision, yeah. really, isn't it? For sure. And you know. And and yeah, uh, people like um, Adrian Smith, um, Gary Morley, John Blanche, you know, the, these sort of like artists who obviously still, they had their own ideas as to how they were going to paint, draw, etc. But they, there was still, a, 
there were still people putting a tick next to yeah okay this is the artwork that we're going to publish or these are the type of models that yeah, we're exactly. going to mm. going to make and then and then it you know gets to the sort of like mid 2000 well 2005 and then they decide they want to change that all um but yeah i mean adrian smith is just yeah it's just great some iconic artwork there that was the storm of chaos no it wasn't it was the um the storm of chaos and then there was end times storm of magic wasn't it storm, oh, storm magic. magic yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that oh yeah, yeah that's iconic look at that just yeah that that inspired a lot of warhammer armies <laughs> wasn't that the cover art yeah for one of the books so, yeah it's in that eighth i want to say eighth edition on no, the left no it was younger than uh, that i think it was oh, was it yeah oh pardon. yeah it was the one with the um, banding running outside, the red banding. Mm. Yeah, it was a Warriors of Chaos. And then you've got your Chaos Troll, which is just so, again, brilliant. I like the little crab claw. Just poking out. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of hor- horrified by the one and a half mouths on the head on the right. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> fantastic so if you are an artist or a content feature um or want to discuss people that you think we should show please let us know we'd love to see it um so many influences over the, over the years um and it'd be really great to show it and so, and celebrate your work okay thank you very much guys that is the end of today's show um please like and subscribe on all the different youtube channels etc And for more hobby content, please feel free to check out our other videos. We'd really appreciate it. Stay safe, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye-bye.